Hello everyone online. Thank you for joining this uh, online webinar session today. Uh, my name is Luca Lavelli. I'm product manager here at Veratron for Marine Aftermarket Product. I'm talking to you today from Switzerland, from our headquarters. Uh, on the line with me today, that is Tony McLachlan uh, from Veratron US, the president of Veratron US. Hello, Tony. Luca, thanks, thanks for uh, setting this up today. Um, just a couple of just uh, intros. I'd like to, to thank Defender for organizing the, the live event invite. And uh, also pleased to inform everyone that uh, Defender is offering a, a one time, uh, sorry, a one year free subscription to Sal Magazine. And uh, there is a, a promo code that we were showing uh, right before the meeting start, which is free sale sub. Um, that gets you a one year free subscription um, with a minimum order. So uh, if you could follow up with your uh, dependent dealer. Um, so we'll have a, a short presentation from Luca, um, 20, 25 minutes, and then uh, a few minutes at the end for, for, for questions. If you have any questions along the way, um, please email me um, at the bottom there. You see Tony McLaughlin at Veroton.com. All right, Luca, we'll pass it over to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tony. So, um, as Tony said, the time is not that much. So, I would like to start over immediately to present you uh, our new product here that you see here next to me, which are sailing mast unit from the Aqualink family. Um, I think you know what a mast unit is. Uh, basically, we're talking about a set of displays which are typically connected onto the mast of your sailboat under the boom where uh, all the navigation and the performance uh, data, whether you're into racing as well or cruising, are visible for the entire crew. So whether for the skipper or for the people aside, all the people on board need to be able to see all the navigation data, very big, very clear and very bright at any point in time. So these are these, the two units we're talking about. These two devices are pure NMEA 2000 devices. So this means that the, these two uh, products simply display the data. They don't do any, any processing of that. So the data must come from the NMEA 2000 network. Uh, the data can come from sensors, for example. So we have uh, also a lot of NMEA 2000 certified sensors. You see them next to me here, for example, our wind sensor here or for, to, to get all the wind direction, uh, wind speed and so on, but also more sophisticated sensors like the nav sensor, which is a combined sensor including a flux gate compass, a GPS and also the inclinometer to get at any point the inclination of your boat. Or for example, once again, uh, a GPS antenna. This is the smallest one on the market. But maybe we will talk about these other sensors in another session. Uh, the data can come from these sensors, but as well, they can come also from a system, so a sailing system. We have, for example, the Aqualink system based on the Navbox CPU, which calculates all the data, do some performance calculations, for example, and output all the data on NMA 2000, so that these displays then will show the, the outcome. Of course, we're also compatible to competitor systems as long as they output on NMA 2000, of course. That's the beauty of the NMA 2000 standard. So uh, let's have a closer look now to these uh, two units. Um, as you can see here, we offer two variants for these devices. Uh, one which is composed of uh, three displays and one which is composed of one single display only. Uh, in portrait mode. So uh, both of them uh, are, of course, whether you need one or the other depends mostly on the on your requirements. So the size of your boat and whether how far people are reading the data. So how big you need the data to be. So as you can imagine, for such a device, readability is the most important feature here. So both these units are based on the same display, which is the one you see here, which is our Aqualink 7 inch. Uh, here we didn't go for any compromise on quality and uh, display readability. 
So this display is an automotive derived display. So you can imagine uh, the extensive requirements, the extended operating uh, temperature it operates. So it's a really a reliable display. It's a TFT 7 inch, 800 times 480 pixel resolution. Uh, it, this is uh, not only a TFT, but is an IPS technology TFT. So what does it mean? IPS technologies uh, basically is a manufacturing technology for TFT that allows the display to have the maximum uh, brightness that is really important for an out outdoor device like the mast unit here, as well as also very important, the widest viewing angle. I think you can appreciate here from, from the video that even by moving, moving this unit almost to 90 degrees against the camera, you can still read the display. So this is really important because when you're on board, the crew is typically outside the boat. So you need the, everyone to be able to read the data. So these displays are really good in this. Uh, what else to say? So the, the display is a touch screen, of course, uh, with bonded mineral glass on, in front. Uh, it's a full touch screen, but you will see it here. So it's a full touch screen display with the side three touch buttons per display. We will see later on for, for what you need this, these buttons here on the display. So, and um, the illumination, as I said before, is also really bright. This can go up to 1000 candela per square meter. So this is really bright. What you're seeing right now on camera is just the minimum, close to the minimum intensity of backlight because of some camera reflection. We will see later when we will go into the settings so how how bright can this display be so uh, again let's describe the two the two variants here that we offer i will start uh, uh, with, with this one so uh, the single mass display as we call it so this is a, a, a device one single seven inch display as i said orientated in portrait mode so here, the display is divided into three data fields. So here, you can independently change the data fields just by swiping your finger on them. And this display is embedded into a bracket. So we offer these two solutions as a kit already pre-mounted from us. So this display is embedded into an, an aluminum in a black anodized aluminum uh, bracket so you see here that is a very sportive look this is all in one piece so this is one piece only uh, so and the, the the display here is mounted flush so you see you don't have any any uh, let's say part of the display coming after after the bracket so this is mounted flush and it gives continuity to the bracket so the other option here that we have this is a three display unit. This one is of course uh, designed for larger boat for uh, applications where really the data need to be big, maybe for really bigger boats. Uh, here, the, the bracket is done in real carbon. So it embeds three displays as you see here. So uh, the real carbon, of course, as you can imagine, have uh, all the benefits that real carbon has in terms of flexibility, sturdiness and resistance to vibration and devices, as well as a lot of flexibility for mounting. So this one is uh, done in three parts. So it's uh, the two wings and the center part. But once again, this comes pre-mounted from us out, uh, out of the production. Uh, in this case, the three displays are mounted from the front. So they all have a bezel on top of them. Uh, you can change them. So we have different designs. Uh, we have different colors for, for this bezel. Here you just see the black ones, but I can also show you that we offer different solutions here. For example, in this case, you can have uh, the white bezel, a gray bezel, as well as a black bezel. Uh, this is typically done because uh, uh, a lot of people like to have, for example, uh, on the three display, uh, two, two, D, two bezel black and, for example, just one white to highlight from far away 
a very sensitive data they are displaying on this very display. So uh, on the back side, so both of these units uh, are delivered with a plastic back cover. You see them here. So is a plastic back cover that covers the rear part of the display. Uh, and this is done for this one and of course as well as for the triple one. So there is this very slim plastic back cover. And this is also a very important feature because as you know, sometimes on the mast between the display and the mounting part of the bracket, the sail ropes are passing through. So it's very important that you have some clearance between the display and the mast. And this solution allows to have really a slim mounting on the back cover so that all the ropes can pass through without any problem. So uh, we will see also how the connection are made and why it is possible to have such a slim back cover on the back side. I will quickly show you, I have an unmounted mast unit here. So I can show you how the connection are made. So the seven inch displays that you see here have a proprietary bus connection. So if you see on the back side of the seven inch display, you just have these two connectors, which are a proprietary bus, NMA 2000 compatible, which allows them to go in and to go out with the data. Therefore, as you see here, to connect these three displays, you don't need a lot of wires and uh, maybe some NMA 2000 T's placed somewhere that uh, they're really bulky and they're not ideal in this mounting concept. But as you see here, the display are simply daisy chained each other. So from the first display, I hope that in the camera this renders good because you can go from the first display to the second one and to, from the second one to the third one. And then from the third one, you can go directly into NMA 2000 with the standard device net connector here. So this is done, of course, through an adapter cable, which is provided by us already, and it's already pre-mounted. So when you will receive this, uh, this uh, product from us, you will already have the NMA 2000 pigtail out here. So the display will already be plug and play to NMA 2000. Um, let's have a look on how you can operate these displays. Maybe there is some reflection from the windows here. So uh, I can show you here how to operate the displays with the touch screen. So as we said, all these screens are touch and you can swipe all the data that you want to have on the display. But as I said at the beginning, every display comes with the three buttons three touch buttons, which are RGB buttons. This allows the user to store up to three favorite pages that you can easily recall at any time where you have important data based on your cruising or uh, docking condition, for example. So you can always recall the page that you've stored. The same, of course, applies to the single unit. So in this case, the three buttons are placed below. Uh, but any button refers to a data field into the display. So here you can also store different data in the three fields here. Um, let's see, for example, how to change the layout because as you see, as you saw before, we have different layouts. So you can have just a big data, one single data. You can have a triple data layout with a bigger one and two smaller data below or you can have the wind rows here. And the six, six data fields are also displayed uh, outside the wind rows. And also this data field can be freely customized by the user. So this is done in a very simple way. You just need to keep press on one touch button and you are prompted here to select which lay layout you want for this favorite. So you can either decide to, to select a triple layout, and then here, again, you select which data you want to change. So, for example, we want to change this data, we double tap, and here we have to select which data field we want to add. 
for example, we can add healing. And the same applies for all the other data fields. Once you're done, you simply press back again the, the, the button, and then you're still into the normal operating mode. This, of course, is applies the same. Every, the whole graphic is just tilted here on the other on the other unit. So you keep press, and then you select which data you want to be in the data field. Of course, you don't have all the other layout options. Let's have a look now also at some settings of the display. So as we said before, uh, these data, these displays don't do a lot of calculation because they're not supposed to do that. The data uh, received are already pre-processed by another system, ideally. But still, they have some, uh, some settings implemented that you can simply access in the same way here. And as you can see, you can control, for example, the backlight or you can change it to day or night mode, which is another critical factor because on board during day sailing, it's really important to be very bright as well as during night sailing, it's really important to have the, the backlight dimmed as low as possible to avoid interfering with the line of sight. So uh, for example, here, everything again is touch screen based. So we can change the backlight. As you can see, all the settings that I'm doing on one display are immediately transmitted to all the other display instantaneously. This is done through NMEA and through our proprietary messages. As you see, this is a very bright, very the maximum brightness. You don't see very well on camera because of course this doesn't render good. As I said, I had to go to the very minimum to have a good, good viewing right now. Uh, the same applies of course for night mode here as, as it normally happens, every digit, every data becomes red, including the buttons, the touch buttons, which are all RGB, so they can change the color, so they also turn red. And again, all the settings are immediately transmitted to all the other displays. There are a few other settings like uh, units. For example, you can select the unit for, for that or the unit for speed or the, or the reference for the heading, whether it's a magnetic or a true heading. And these are, again, once again, all the settings transmitted instantaneously to all the other displays. So to, to quit the menu, you just press once again and you're good to go. Uh, this is all the touch-based operation. Uh, of course, as you, as you might know, on board is not always easy to operate the touch screen because of the boat shaking or because of weather conditions. So we also have, we also offer the remote control, which is comes from the Aqualink family as well that you see here. This also has the customization uh, in terms of bezel. So you can make match it with the rest of your, of your instrument. For example, we have the, the white bezel that you can apply on and we have the gray bezel as well. But most notably, this uh, remote control operates on NMEA 2000, so you can have this one installed on your, on your uh, steering station, for example, and operate your displays from far away. So all the settings I've been doing before by touchscreen are possible also with the remote control. For example, we can uh, change the data, we can scroll all the data, or we can enter the settings and operate the backlight. So basically you can do, as I said, all the operation uh, that I did by touch screen just by with, with the remote control as well. Additionally, if you have the remote control, you can also lock the touch functionality because this is also another problem that often happens, uh, ghost touches. So due to water drops or for any other reason, uh, it might, the, the, the displays, every touch screen display actually might suffer of ghost touches. So maybe a water drop going on the display might accidentally change the data you're, you're currently displaying. So then with the remote control, you can also lock the screen. So by pressing both these buttons, you can lock the screen and unlock the screen. So you see when the screen is locked, the touch operation is not possible anymore. So this is, a, uh, this is all about the, the 
operation with the remote control. Uh, I think that I covered more or less all the aspects, all the topics uh, about this, these two units. Uh, these are very important, um, so let's say important devices because uh, we have, uh, for example, all these displays, which I forgot to mention, are IPX7. This is for an outdoor device, is also another key feature. So as you can see, uh, on, the, on the back side, on the back side of the unit, the back cover has a hole here, which allows the water not to get stuck on the back side of the on the back side of the unit, but to flow out. So, uh, and this is not a problem with the displays because uh, these displays are IPX7 from both the front and the rear side. So there's no uh, there's no no real issue when, of course, when all the wires are connected of having uh, damages on the display due to water ingress. Um, I think we're pretty much uh, over with the time. Uh, I hope I gave you uh, all the key information about these two products. Uh, at this point, uh, I would say that, uh, uh, Tony, if we have received, meanwhile, any question uh, on, your, on your email, Maybe we can have now a short Q&A session to reply to them. So, Tony, I, I give you the lead now. Yeah, actually, Luca, yeah, there is a couple of questions um, about mounting and then the orientation. So, uh, one question is, um, you know, can the, can the actual link display um, as a standard unit be mounted to a bulkhead um, in, in, in either a portrait or a, or a landscape mode? And, um, and then how do you change? Is it easy to change from portrait to landscape? Okay, yes. So, um, as I said at the beginning, these two units are normally sold as a kit. So as you see them, you will receive at home. So already pre-mounted and with the display already uh, programmed, let's say with the right orientation. So in this case, they will be oriented uh, horizontally while this one will be already preset to portrait. Um, there's still a possibility anyway to change that. Uh, for this you need the nav control uh, or our diagnostic tool that we offer separately, which operates on NMA2000, uh, but you can do this also with the, with the nav control of course. So for example, let's change the orientation on, on this display uh, you can just press and here you press a, a very specific button and here you're back to the region where you're asked whether you want the display to be in horizontal or in vertical mode. Here, of course, we can also set it to horizontal. And see here now the display will be set to horizontal. Um, the, the display, of course, can be also bought separately. So. We offer these two uh, variants composed of three displays or one, but uh, you're also free to, to build up your own system by uh, simply ordering uh, the seven inch alone, this display, and adding more displays, which uh, by the way, recently is often the case. And to build your own bracket, sometimes it's also the case that the mast manufacturer already embeds the bracket into the mast. This is more maybe in professional use. But let's say in principle that's how you can you can change the orientation of the display. Is there any yeah, other Yeah Luca then uh, I, a follow on question to that. Um, since it's connected to the NEMA bus, is there a, a maximum amount of displays? I mean can you use more than three displays in the system? Say say there's uh, the mast mount bracket and then customer wants to mount additional displays on a bulkhead. But what's the capacity of that uh, of displays? Okay, uh, let's say that's not an easy question to answer because um, let me say from our side or from a purely uh, a theoretical point of view, you, there is no limit on how many displays you connect on, on your boat. Um, I, I could imagine that the, the limit uh, would come from an energetic point of view, so from your battery. So 
even though these displays are designed with very low power consumption, so they consume at 12 volts around about uh, 600 milliamps. Uh, when, you, when you want more and more, uh, of course, you might run into maybe a battery issue. This is more up to your battery system design, I would say. Okay, um, good. Thank, thank you. And then related to the, the two kits, um, what, what can our customers expect to get when they purchase? What's, in, what's included in the kit? Yeah, so basically, um, basically what you see. So uh, this unit, just as an example, is uh, carefully packed uh, into a carton box. Uh, this will come, as you see, pre-mounted with the back cover mounted already on it and with the NMEA pigtail coming out. Uh, so you, you can really do here a plug and play installation on your NMEA 2000 network. I think additionally, we have in the box also um, a, a T a T connection just to just to integrate into the, your NMEA 2000 uh, network and uh, an optional termination resistor that you might need according to your NMEA 2000 network design. So the same, of course, applies for this one for the for the triple one. Um, of course, in, in these cases, so we offer this as a kit, but we offer also the bracket as a spare part. So uh, if you purchase the, the entire uh, mass display unit, you will get the whole unit like this, as you see it. Uh, but of course, the, 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 the bracket is also available as a spare part to be ordered. And in that case, you will have uh, accompanying that the back cover, all the screws and all you need to mount to mount the, the bracket but this is a, this is another case okay great thank you for that um, since we're uh, coming up on the end of our time I, I don't have any additional questions from the outside um, I think we can begin to wrap it up I'd like to just uh, again thank the center for uh, uh, organizing the invite and again um, for those that have joined Defender are offering a one-year free subscription to sale magazine um, with the promo code of free sale sub um, with a minimum order so um, yeah please contact your Defender salesperson but again thanks a lot and um, look forward to seeing uh, more of you Luca with uh, future live events so yeah. at this point I think we'll wrap it up yeah, right. Thank you, Tony. I also thank you all for attending and for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed the, the, this short presentation. If you have any additional question or if you want to receive some documentation about it, uh, contact us through Defender and uh, we will uh, happily to reply to you. So looking forward for the next session. So thanks again to all of you from my side. Uh, stay safe and thank you.